Have you ever wondered if incredibly cheap training aids that we see all over the internet can actually help your game and help you play better? Well, that's what I'm gonna test in this video. I've got five training aids and each of them cost me less than 10 pounds. So I'm gonna say, are they worth it? Can they help you? Let's get started. So in these parcels, <laughs> thanks Joe. And this one, in these two boxes are five training aids. Now I have no idea what is in these boxes because I gave Joe, who's holding that camera, my Amazon account login. I asked him to go on there and buy five training aids that were all under 10 pounds. This is what's in here. So we're gonna open them up one at a time, see what they are and then give them a test. So I'm not sure how many is in each one. So let's start off with this one. Now I'm not expecting much because these are obviously all really, really cheap. So the first one, I'm not even sure what that is. Let's open it and let's see. It looks like some sort of grip thing. So let's see if it works. So let's try and clip it on the golf club. And I guess there's no instruction. So you kind of have to figure these things out. So I'm gonna just try and clip it in the middle of the grip. That feels like it's quite a snug fit. Now I use pretty standard size grips. So if you're someone who uses, let's say, mid-sized grips, or maybe use those jumbo grips, my hunch is that it wouldn't fit. I don't have any bigger grips here, but my guess is that it wouldn't fit on those golf clubs. Do you know what? That doesn't feel bad. That doesn't feel bad. It doesn't feel like a million miles away from my kind of normal grip. <sighs> Look, if you're struggling with your grip, if you know it's terrible, this isn't bad, right? It's gonna give you kind of a, a basic hold of the golf club. It's gonna put your left hand in a fairly decent position and it's gonna put your bottom hand in a decent position. Quality wise, it's, it's all right. It's plastic, it feels fairly durable. It doesn't feel like it would snap or break. Easy to put on. It's not bad, it's not bad. I think as a, as a starting point for someone trying to work on the grip, not a bad start. Right, let's go find the next one. Right, up next, let's see what this is. Again, there's no instructions. So that makes it more difficult to kind of figure out what it is. It says, it says golf swing on it. That's a good start, I guess. Right, let's see if we can get into this. So I'm initially thinking it's like for knee or for arm. There's like a seam down the middle, if you can see that there. Okay, so it bends this way, but not. Ah, there's a little click in it. So I'm guessing that is probably gonna be for your left arm. I can't imagine it be for your knees. So it's gonna be on your left arm. Let's give it a go. Uh, like quality. It's okay, uh, again, it's under 10 pounds, so it, it is what you'd expect it to be. So this looks like it's to keep your lead arm straight. So who's it for? It's gonna be for anybody who's got a really bent lead arm. Now, that starts the question of, is a bent lead arm actually a fault? In many cases, it's not. It can help you get a little bit more length in your swing, and we see lots of great players with slightly bent arms at impact. Let's put it on, and let's see how easy it is actually to get onto my lead arm. Okay. So fairly easy to put on. And if I bend my lead arm, kind of clicks. I felt a little bit strange on the way through. So as I got to this point, it's kind of a little restrictive. My overall thought here is it just goes back to the idea of, is it actually a fault that your lead arm is bending? Because it doesn't take a lot for that to click, okay? And there's a lot to golfers that I've coached who would actually benefit. That's now clicked. And I don't think that's a bad position at all. Right, next one. Okay, up next. So there should be three in here. Let's get this one out. Okay, that is golf training mat. This might be one of those mats that you kind of hit off, maybe, and it gives you an indication of strike. So I think on this, you place your golf ball there. Uh, okay, yeah, so it's got this kind of brushed effect. So it's gonna hopefully tell me where my club lands and whether I hit it kind of thin or fat or off the toe or off the heel. I actually think this could be quite good. Depends how well it works, because, well, it was cheap, it was under 10 pounds, but I reckon this could be quite good. Let's give it a go. I've actually got fairly high hopes for this, and Joe told me that this was actually one of the cheapest. This was under five pounds, which is crazy. If it actually does what it says it should, or what it's designed to, then it's actually a really good price. So let's kind of open it up. And to be honest, the quality kind of feels really good. It feels like it's well made. It's kind of got rubber on the bottom, which I guess is gonna stick it to the mat. It feels like it's decent quality. And it also came with these Velcro strips, which are double-sided. The idea would be wherever your golf club lands and travels like this, you should be able to get some visual feedback. I mean, that's perfect. Like this should work. Like this, in theory, this is great.
Well, there's an issue straight away. The mat went a few feet. And yeah, not really got a lot of feedback there, have I? Yeah, I mean, that's gonna be an issue if every time you hit it, it goes miles. So I just finished that and Joe reckons that the Velcro might be for the back of the mat to keep it to that mat. So let's give that a go. It looks like that will go on there. I don't know how long this sticky would last. So theoretically, that should now be stuck to the ground. Okay. Well, it sticks to the mat. It doesn't stick to the actual mat itself. So I'm determined to give this a real go. These got pegs with it. So I'm guessing the pegs go through the holes. You can stick it on grass. It should secure it in place. You should get more feedback. So I'm in my studio at the moment. I'm gonna go outside, try and hit a few shots of grass, see whether it works. And this is its last chance, trust me. So we come outside with the mat, but I'm guessing if you've got like a garden, you could maybe practice this. So I'm gonna use these four pegs and I'm just gonna secure it to the ground. So let's try no golf ball. Let's see if we can get some sort of decent feedback. Again, it still feels slightly raised up, but can't really get around that. I mean, again, there's just, there's just nothing there. So when I put the club on this way and go forwards, I do get this kind of nice visual and I think that's great because it shows me where I've contacted it. But just, you know, if you just look down at that mat as I make a swing, it just doesn't seem to give me that feedback in an actual swing. I mean, maybe that was a little better, but I still wouldn't be confident as to where that's hit. It looks like it's hit here. It's definitely better because it's more secure, but it's not really giving me the kind of feedback that I wanted. So I'm still, still unsure about this one. Right, what is next? Ah, I have seen these before. So it basically clips onto your golf club and it actually kind of works to help with kind of wrist set and making sure your kind of wrist angles are okay. So far, so good, this one could be all right. Let's give it a test. I've known this as the swing guide. Now I don't know whether that's the make of it now, whether it's just a, a copy that's obviously cheap. You basically clip it onto your golf club. But what you'll see, is that it's for wrist set, basically. So as I take my setup, if I do it this way, as you can see, so the idea is that fits into your little forearm there, so you can sort of feel when you get to a kind of full wrist set. The other thing you can do actually with these, and this is kind of more how I used it. If I go from down the line, if I can get my sort of halfway back position and my wrist is pretty flat, it sits pretty nicely onto my forearm. So there's my kind of feedback that I've got pretty much a 90 degree wrist set, and I've got my lead wrist pretty flat. Watch what happens if I keep my wrist cupped and try and hinge up, it misses. The, the biggest issue here is that you've got to get it set up right. If you don't get it set up right, it's not gonna give you the feedback you want and you could actually be working into the wrong positions. So for me, if I was hitting a little shot, I could go halfway back, I can feel it there and go through. As with others, I'll re reserve my judgment for the end, but this one's actually got some potential. And last up, there should be one more in here. Really small. Uh, sports golf swing arm. No idea what this is. Some sort of strapping. So this is a figure of eight strap. So yeah, I've seen these before. So this is gonna go kind of one arm through here, one arm through there. It's gonna keep my elbows pretty close together. Sounds like a pretty good training aid. I've got my reservations already. We'll go through why, but let's give it a test first. So this is a, I mean, I've, I've known these as like figure of eight straps. It's basically elasticated, it, it stretches. It's gonna go over my elbows. So this is going to keep the elbows close, which yeah, generally we tend to see in most good golf things. So theoretically, this would work. I have my reservations already. I'll explain why as we go through the video. Quality, it's okay. I mean, it's it feels quite tight, the elastic. So here's my issue with it, right? I'm gonna take a setup, okay? My elbows are gonna start pretty close. And because the fact that it's quite tight elastic, as I go back, if I'm someone who separates the elbows, it's gonna keep them a lot closer, okay? So theoretically, it sounds like a good thing. It's probably not, in my opinion. I'll explain why. Let me just hit a shot first. Now straight away, I would guess that my golfing will look better with this on. The reason I, I don't personally like these is because if my elbows are in this golfing separating, okay, the distance between them is getting greater, what do I need to do in the golfing to fix that? Well, I need to squeeze my elbows together. Okay, I need to push this elbow towards this elbow, right? Keep them closer. What this is doing, because it's so tight, when I set up, if I was to completely relax, it would actually cause my elbows to kind of do this because it's pulling them inwards. So at setup, 
To make sure I haven't got this really weird kind of elbow position, I'm actually forcing my elbows away from each other, which is the complete opposite to what I'm trying to do. Okay, if I just completely relax, my elbows kind of fall in this position, which is not where I want them to be. So a good setup for me here, I have to feel like I put some outward pressure on this band. So whilst it kind of feels like it would be a good thing, it kind of keeps your elbows together, it probably made my golf thing look better. If I'm trying to force my elbows out, and I hit 10 or 15 shots with this, when I take it off, I'm gonna be like doing this in my golf swing. So it's almost working the complete opposite. You've probably seen me in previous videos use something between my elbows, like a ball. Now, what have you got to do to keep that ball in place? You've got to squeeze the elbows. So that's actually causing you to squeeze inwards, which is the right thing. The last thing you want to be doing is using something which forces your elbows outward, because that's what you're trying to fix. I think it's kind of, got a little bit of merit, but I personally don't like what it sort of makes you do as the golfer, even though for me, that would probably make my golf thing look a little bit better. Right, it's the next day. I've had some time to think and process them. I've actually hit a few more shots with them. So we're gonna kind of rank them. We're gonna put them into a list. So what we've got here is a list. We've got eagle, birdie, par, bogey, double bogeys. How are we gonna rate them? Well, they were basically 10 pounds. Some of them were slightly less, but let's say they were 10 pounds. So if I paid 10 pounds, par means I feel like I got 10 pounds worth of product. Eagle means I paid 10 pounds, I feel like I got a lot more value. And then double bogey means I paid 10 pounds and I just got kind of nothing for it. So what's first on the list? Well, we've got this, which is the kind of figure of eight strap. So where am I gonna put that? Well, I'm gonna put it par. I kind of got something from it. We went through why I don't believe it's the best for a golfer, but if my elbows separate and I just kind of want to feel what it's like to have them in a better position, it's got some value. It kind of does that. I don't think it's great long term, but it sort of does what it's meant to say. So we'll kind of put it there. Now I might rejig some of these a little bit later, but let's leave that there for now. Next up, this one, the grip. Now, I actually don't think this was too bad. I think it's decent. I think it does mean you've got to put it on in the right way. If you put it on incorrectly, then you're going to be pretty skewed and it's not ideal. But look, it was under 10 pounds. What did I get for that? We'll put it there. It was okay. I feel like it does a job not too bad. Now this one, interesting. The downside with this, it was incredibly, like incredibly difficult to get on the golf club. Like I felt like I needed four hands and a vice to get it on. But once it was on, it did a job. I don't mind it. Similar to the grip one, you've got to put it on in the right way. And with all of these, no instructions at all. That's for me quite a big thing because you start paying a bit more money for a training aid, you get instructions, you often get videos that accompany them, you get kind of instructions on how to use it. None of these did. So I'm going to put that, I'm going to put it there with a the grip. It's not bad, it's not terrible. Right. Next up, this one, the kind of left arm, clicky, brace, band thing. Uh, I'm undecided about this one because it does exactly what it says it's going to do. You put it on your lead arm, when your lead arm bends, it clicks, it tells you what it's trying to do. But it goes back to what I was saying, is that really a fault? I'm going to put that there, but I might move it. And then... The one that I had so much hope for, the one that I was really excited to use. This is the one when I opened it, got me the most excited. Um, really thought this was gonna be some kind of good stuff that would give me some good information and it completely let me down. Now in its favor, it was the cheapest. It was like five pounds. Well, let's put it somewhere and then we'll, we'll maybe jig around. I'm gonna put it there. So am I happy with that? No, this one I'm gonna drop because I don't, I don't think it's a fault. To bend your left arm isn't a fault. Um, so actually, let's drop it down there because I think it's wrong. It's not doing the right thing. Um, right, this mat. Ugh. I hit lots of shots with it, right? Lots of shots, inside, outside. I don't think one shot that I hit, I got any feedback from that was usable to me. So let's, let's move it, it's gotta go there. I've paid five pounds for it, but I didn't get any value from it at all. Do you know what? I'm gonna move that one. That's not bad. You've gotta put it on the right way, I've said. Right, I'm done. Rigged it, rejigged it a few times. So if you looked at these and you're thinking that looks really good value, they're not, don't think about it. These three, yeah, maybe. Is it worth spending 10 pounds on some training aids from Amazon to help you with the game? Overall, I don't think they were great quality, but for 10 pounds, 
you can get a little bit of help if you choose wisely.